What should your partner be doing if you want to get pregnant? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford, a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor and every week we sit here and we talk about your fertility health and hormones so that you can understand your body better and be a better advocate for yourself. Well, lately I've been out promoting my new book, The Fertility Formula, and talking to experts across so many different fields. And one consistent truth is how we are not talking about male fertility enough and how often female partners are not feeling supported by their men. Even if they want to be supportive, they don't know what to do. Fertility is a team sport. So in today's episode, we're going to break down understanding male fertility, the lifestyle factors, what you should be doing or avoiding, and how we can really approach this together. 50% of cases of infertility are due to male factors. So this is something that we definitely need to pay attention to. Before we dive in, if you wanna learn more, please consider subscribing, sharing, or leaving a comment below. We're about to do a whole Q&A series. So leave your comments, and even if we don't answer them here, we're gonna be making some videos based off of them. And check out the link to pre-order my new book, The Fertility Formula. Now, when it comes to male fertility, it's really different than for females because the lifespan of a sperm is about 90 days. Sperm are created de novo or new inside the body, meaning in the testes, there are cells that will package sperm, create the DNA, package the sperm, and then the sperm grow and develop throughout the course of the testes. And that takes about 72 days. So over this time, sperm are going from just a little cell with the head to developing into what we think of as the sperm with the tail, the whole structure. And then once they've come across the testes and developed, they are in the ejaculatory duct for up to 18 days. So we say a 90 day or three month lifespan of sperm. Contrast this to eggs, which are in our bodies our entire lives. Eggs tend to accumulate that wear and tear more. And even though there's lifestyle factors that can influence egg quality, sperm quality counts are so much more sensitive to the world around us. This represents a major place where we can make change or at least pay attention to our world and see a difference in sperm. Just like in women, there's a brain kind of communication axis with the gonads. And this is called the hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis in men. So the hypothalamus sends out a hormone called GnRH, which talks to the pituitary gland to send out FSH and LH, same hormones like they do in women. But in men, what these hormones are doing are they creating the production of sperm and testosterone. I remember sperm and testosterone are made at the same time. And this means that that is also communicating back to the brain to tell the brain how much we need to make. One big idea is there's two major folds where we see things impact male fertility. One is at the brain level. So running interference to the brain so that the brain gets with the wrong signal or can't understand the signal clearly. Therefore, it's not sending out the right hormones. And this is how certain lifestyle factors can directly impact the quantity or the production of sperm. Secondarily is the environment of your body. Since sperm are created in your body in real time, their development is influenced by your environment. This represents such an opportunity to make things great. In my perfect world, if you wanted to get pregnant, I would say before you start trying, spend three months really trying to decrease your inflammation, avoiding toxins, and paying attention to the world around you. But this also means understanding where you're starting and not doing anything even inadvertently to make this worse. Next is going to be thinking about red flags and getting them evaluated sooner. So let's think about this. Number one, I would have my partner stop testosterone. Testosterone is going to feed back to the brain and tell the brain that you have T, therefore you have sperm, and this is going to make our brain not send out FSH and LH, therefore not making sperm or T. This can be hugely problematic. And I've seen men rightfully place on testosterone for symptoms, but without understanding the reproductive consequences, they were then azoospermic or had no sperm and they had no idea that this was going to happen to them. If you are on T, you also need to be on a medication to continue sperm production. A good example of this is HCG. However, if you are being started on T, you need to bring this up to your doctor because there's other medical options besides testosterone use if you're trying or wanting to have a family. Now, this doesn't mean that your reason to need the medication was false because if you have fatigue, weight gain, low libido, there might be something medically wrong. So I also think it's a huge issue that we see men just put on T for these symptoms without ever getting a lab work panel. And I see this so often in my lab. Somebody's coming to me placed on T for 
fatigue and they didn't even have blood work checked and they could have a thyroid or some other hormonal issue that's organically causing this problem that if we treated it, they would feel better or could improve their symptoms. So number one, no testosterone. If you do have low T symptoms, please get those evaluated and bring up to your doctor that you're trying. If anybody tells you testosterone doesn't matter, they do not understand what is happening. Now, if they say you can use testosterone if we're also giving you this other medication, then there's some nuance. But if you want a family, check a semen analysis. Number two is going to be decreasing inflammation where you can. A big player for this is behavioral toxins. So we always think about toxins in the world around us, of course, in plastics and things in our kitchen. But what I'm much more concerned about is the impact that behavioral toxins have. Nicotine, cigarettes, cannabis use, alcohol use, external heat. These all impact the testicular environment directly. And then some of them have a multitude of factors. So cannabis is a great one. And yes, everybody might say, I know so-and-so who's a huge cannabis user and they did fine. We know from data now that it can inhibit the hypothalamus. So you can have decrease in sperm production. It can also change the environment of the body profoundly, making sperm less motile, making them have more abnormal shapes. And even if the male partner alone is the one utilizing cannabis, we see lower pregnancy rates, longer time to pregnancy, and higher miscarriage rates in female partners. This doesn't even talk about fetal implications, but the DNA, half the code for that embryo is in the sperm's head, and we know that these behavioral toxins are playing a role. When it comes to heat, just remember, the testes are meant to be outside the body to keep sperm production at a lower than normal body temperature. If we look at men who have an undescended testes, you have a higher risk of testicular failure because that testes was just inside your normal body temperature for too long. So think about external heat, getting in hot tubs and saunas. This can absolutely have a detrimental impact on sperm that is reversible if we stop that use and repeat it in three months. So these behavioral toxins are things that we should eliminate if we want to get pregnant and have the highest chance of having a healthy pregnancy possible. Number three is gonna be really actively working to decrease inflammation where we can. For men, a lot of this comes from stress, not sleeping enough, and eating a lot of processed foods and processed meats. So we know that diets high in fiber, fruits, and vegetables are more beneficial for sperm production. We know that getting more sleep improves sperm production, and for every hour or less, we see a change in sperm counts. And we know that stress causes inflammation and insulin resistance. So not to be a squeaky wheel about this, but if fertility is a team sport, can we go to bed together? Can we set a good sleeping environment? How can we mitigate our stress? What can we do to know that we are controlling these factors? Because some of them really can play a big role. Number four is I take a supplement for men's multivitamin and health. It's really hard to get all the antioxidants and things you might need from your diet. And so some of the supplements that we see can be advantageous for sperm can be zinc, CoQ10, selenium, N-acetylcysteine, those antioxidants, vitamin C, vitamin E, and then L-arginine and L-carnitine. And so there's a lot of sperm support, or you can research if some of these might be important or helpful based on your specific scenario. Number five is gonna be not abstaining too long. Importantly, sperm are made every second of every minute of every hour of every day. There is no utility in saving up sperm for that perfect time for ovulation. Yes, we ask you to save two to three days before a semen analysis because that is what we see as far as being good reference points to know if you're falling into the norm. But if you're trying to get pregnant, do not have less sex. In fact, abstaining too long, having an absence interval of four days or more is associated with worse sperm parameters. And that gets even further if it's been seven days. And this is because sperm die, debris back up, and it's really like a highway full of stalled cars. So we want you to be in a position where frequent ejaculation can be great. If you're trying to get pregnant, you can have intercourse daily. Certainly having intercourse before or right at that time period of ovulation is going to have the highest yield of getting pregnant, but we don't need to save up sperm. And then number six is going to be get a semen analysis. You don't know what you don't know. It is so hard for me to see couples who are trying to get pregnant for a full year. Then they come in and then we find out there's a major male factor. If you want to be pregnant soon or you're trying to get pregnant now, going ahead and getting a semen analysis, you can do this at a lot of different places. Call a for fertility clinic, ask your OB, or look into online options can be a huge benefit to know this information right now and help you get pregnant faster. Ask your male fertility questions below, and I'm happy to answer them. As always, thanks for being here. You can get more information on the As A Woman podcast or on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD, and don't forget to check out the fertility formula.